On Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 63, you're gonna get an enormous dose of the blues. We're gonna look at two guitars that are so full of mojo, I don't even know what to do with them. And you're gonna learn everything you need to know about resonator guitars. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 63. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And this week, the guitar geek list is full of all things blues. I'm talking resonator guitars and artists that you will totally, absolutely love. And I'm super excited to dig in because this is really our first full-blown themed episode because it's all about the blues and it's all about loud, nasty resonator guitars. And helping me be loud and nasty is none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. The first, Noah, cheers to you, buddy. Hey, cheers to you, Tony. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I, your socks are killing me right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't even know if I want to attempt to try to show <laughs> yeah, the it, socks. But uh, just I want for everybody viewing, you know, Noah's socks obviously aren't on film right now, but I can see them. And it's it's like <clears throat> any uh, a movie theater, the carpet at a movie theater that's like so busy. It's not. That's exactly what his socks are made out of. In fact, I think I see <laughs> some not, popcorn my socks stuck. Are not, <laughs> my socks are not made out of carpet <laughs> material. They're socks. It looks like it. And they. It has the design of the Harlequin character, like the traditional. I know when people say Harlequin today, they think of the the Suicide Squad or whatever. But no, there was a, a, a character from a bygone era. And I remember my mom reading the Harlequin romance novels. <laughs> <laughs> so those socks are dedicated to your mom. Yes. All right. Well, Noah, I mean, there's so much blues and fusion in today's episode. I, know. I, have, I have two beverages. Because I think I'm going to work up a sweat, and I need to stay hydrated. And you are wearing a sweater. Yeah, I'm cutting weight for the uh, wrestling match coming up. Oh, okay. No wrestling match. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, just This is what I rolled in today, my, my tack sweatshirt, and I was just, like, feeling all comfy and warm, cozy. You look good. All right. Well, let's dig in, shall we? Yes. Okay. First up on my list today is your Resonator Guitar Survival Guide. Okay, because I think there's a lot of myths surrounding resonator guitars. And it's like, oh, well, I can't, I can't play a resonator guitar. I'm not good enough. Or I can't play a resonator guitar because I don't play slide. Or I can't play a resonator guitar because I have to learn a whole new style of play. That's just not true. Because resonator guitars, you can tune them to standard tuning and play everything that you know on a regular guitar, on a resonator guitar, and it's going to sound awesome. It's another, it's another sonic flavor to add to your arsenal. So I want to discuss resonator guitars today because I want you to be able to walk into your local guitar store or shop online and know what you're looking at and be confident enough to give them a shot because they're really fun. I mean, resonator guitars are truly magical instruments. So let's dig in. The first choice that you're gonna need, or the first choice that you'll be confronted with when it comes to resonator guitars is neck type, okay? Now, what I'm talking about here is the actual profile of the neck. You're either gonna see a round neck resonator guitar or a square neck resonator guitar. And luckily for us here, I've got both on hand. This is a round neck, well, if I can get it out of the stand. This is a round neck resonator guitar. The neck is round, you play it like a standard guitar. All right? This, over to my right, is, you can get this one out of the stand, is a square neck resonator guitar. You can't fret, I mean, you, you literally can't fret this. The, the nuts sitting, the, the, the strings are about a half inch off the fretboard, and square neck resonator guitars are made to play flat in your lap. So think uh, like Dobro style or like bluegrass Dobro. Um, Sometimes people call it lap slide. All of those names suffice for a square neck resonator guitar. So first choice, round neck 
or square neck. Square neck is exclusively for lap style playing. Round neck, you can play your standard stuff uh, that you play on your normal guitar, or you can play with a bottleneck slide or something like that. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the dish. Okay, because resonator guitars have resonator systems in them. That's what helped them make the sound that they do. And you're probably gonna run into three of the most common resonator systems when you're out there looking at resonator guitars. And I want you to be able to tell the difference between the two. And I want you to be able to hear the difference between, I'm sorry, between the three, I said two, there's three. Um, so let's start with the most common resonator system. And that is a single cone resonator that is of a biscuit style, okay? Now you're gonna be looking at a picture and you'll see that the single cone resonator, it's like an aluminum speaker cone that's pointed inside the guitar's body and the strings go over this wooden saddle that sits on top of a wooden disc and that's lovingly referred to as the biscuit. Now these particular guitars sound extremely distinct because they're, they're very barky. They have this beautiful kind of thump and, and really strong projection, but they decay really quickly. They don't have a ton of sustain. They may have a little bit more sustain than a standard flat top acoustic guitar, but in the resonator guitar world, single cone biscuit style resonators have a very quick decay. So they're really good for slide. They're great for blues. Uh, if, you, if you find yourself uh, finger picking like rag timey or real thumpy blues, a single cone biscuit style resonator is the one that I definitely think you should check out. And it's probably the most common out there. If you look at many national guitars, uh, oftentimes they are a single biscuit cone style guitar. Guitar. In fact, the one that I have here next to me is a single cone biscuit style resonator guitar. This is a, a, a Supro Collegian that was actually made by National. And under the hood, it is a single cone biscuit style resonator and it has just a beautiful thumb. projection, good strong sustain, or rather, I'm sorry, good strong projection, but a little bit shy on the sustain end of things. Uh, so the notes die pretty quickly, but they're very strong right off the get-go. The next resonator style that you're gonna run into is called a spider bridge or a spider cone resonator style. Now this particular resonating system is a lot different than the biscuit style because the cone is actually inverted. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the cone of a spider bridge is actually outward, like much like a speaker. So think of the guitar as a speaker cabinet and that aluminum resonator cone is shooting out. And on top of that resonator cone looks like, uh, actually looks like a spider web and the strings go across that on top of a wooden saddle. I happen to have an example of a spider cone bridge here and this is my beard, bell beard guitar. Uh, from the front, you, you'd never be able to know, but if you look under the cover plate, you'll start to see that spider web kind of bracing system that the saddle sits on and that is what indicates a spider bridge resonator guitar these guitars are common on square neck guitars obviously um, and also round neck and what's significant about these spider bridge resonating systems is that they're very long on sustain. They're very good at note articulation. They're really lush and huge sounding. They might not be as loud as a single cone biscuit style resonator guitar, but for what they lack in volume, they make up for in sustain. So if you like doing slide, really long kind of sensitive uh, passages, if you will, a uh, spider bridge resonator guitar would be a great option for you. And last, but certainly not least, probably the most intimidating of all the resonators <laughs> is a tricone, okay? So a tricone, as the name suggests, is three resonators. There's three 10-inch resonator cones, kind of oriented like the biscuit style or resonator, but they're three, right? There's two on the base end of the side, uh, the, the base side of the guitar, and a, a single one on the treble side of the guitar and running across them is a metal or like a cast aluminum T. And that's what the strings actually run over. Now, the beautiful thing about tricones is that they actually marry the bark of a single cone biscuit and the sustain of a spider bridge resonator. So you get this beautiful projection, the strong projection, but also this nice long uh, tail on the note. They're great for slide, awesome for alternate tunings. And I actually happen to have one here 
This is a mule tricone, and from the front, you'd say, well, Tone, that's not much of a tricone, but this is actually modeled after a 1927 National where they put a tricone resonating system in a single cone body. More on this guitar here in a second. In fact, you'll be able to hear it much better than um, if I played it with this microphone. So that's, that's the basics of resonator guitars. Can you play a resonator guitar right now? Absolutely, you don't need any special skills. You just need to want to make beautiful sounding music and grab a resonator guitar and you absolutely will be able to. Just a quick run over again. So neck profile is, is the first option you're going to run into. Uh, you're going to run into round necks or square necks. Square necks are exclusively lap style playing and round necks you can do pretty much whatever with. And then you go into the resonating systems. You've got a single cone biscuit bridge, which is real barky. Think single cone biscuit for bark. Then you have a spider bridge resonator. Think spider bridge for smooth and sustain. And then you have a tricone, which is kind of that, that middle ground of sustain and bark. And uh, you're actually gonna hear somebody play a tricone here when we get to who I'm listening to this week. But I digress. I want you to now be able to go into your local guitar store and confidently take a resonator guitar off the wall, be able to look inside it and know what you're looking at, and more importantly, be able to play it and have fun with it because it's resonator guitars are so cool. It's like an instant sonic addition to your guitar arsenal and you don't have to learn anything new. It just sounds amazing. So there you have it. That's my scoop on resonators and in the theme of resonators and today's episode of blues and resonator guitars, I've got a guitar geek trivia question for you. That is right up uh, the resonator alley, if you will. Noah, will you? Yeah. Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> Here is your guitar geek trivia question for the day. Resonator guitars can be commonly referred to as Dobros, but Dobro is actually a brand name. The brand name Dobro actually has a hidden meaning. What does Dobro stand for? Does it stand for A, double resonator, B, double the sound, C, dutiful owners of beautiful resonating objects, or D, Dopiera Brothers? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before I go any further, I do want to share with you all who I'm listening to this week, but I have to check out the mailbag because there's some good stuff in the mailbag this week, Noah. <laughs> well, I, what's, I can't wait. What's in the mailbag, Tom? <laughs> Why did you look at me like that? What was that? Because I always, I always feel like there's like this. You have this underlying thing. Like you, I have a tone. You, you already know whether or not I got anything in the mailbag or not. <laughs> and so the way that you bring up and introduce the mailbag, yeah, I, I know it's because you know I have something to or not. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Well, Noah, there is stuff in here for us as a as a studio. Okay. Let me just let me just dig in. Yes. Okay. This this unassuming envelope showed up and out dropped this this wonderful little pink little note note card and it says, "Tony, Noah, I purchased some mustache wax, Beard Guys brand. Upon opening the package, a guitar pick fell out. Not sure of the connection, so a unique addition to your collection." And that's from mm -hmm. Frederick W in Michigan. So I want to thank uh, Frederick for sending along this this really cool Beard Guys guitar pick it's gonna go in the uh it's gonna go in the pick pouch slash pick mug over here and uh, eventually make it to the pick wall so thank you frederick for uh sending that along and i'll have to check out the uh, beard guys brand of of uh, uh hmm. facial hair products i'm That's excited cool. i'm excited to check that out a that was addressed to both of us a, surpri a surprise pick yeah out of a beer care product did you say beer care beard care <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. This one's really cool. This one actually came addressed to Noah, but I opened it. He just handed it to me. He's like, here, this is for you. <laughs> so upon opening this package, it was from Canada, by the way, so I was excited. Um, really cool guitar geek card. And on the back, it says Tree Strings, which is the name of the piece on the front, I'm assuming, by Barb Graham. And I thought, that's pretty darn cool. Cool art. Very guitar-infused art. And then opening the card, it says, To Tony and Noah and the Acoustic Life team, thanks for your support. And who's it signed by, Noah? Do you know who it's signed by? Um, no. Callum Graham. Oh, okay. Whom it we is that featured one. Okay. Uh, three episodes, four. No, it was longer than that. It was four episodes ago, maybe. Yeah. So he sent, he sent us a really awesome card. Oh, that's right. I didn't see the card yet because I gave it to you and you oh, opened it. I didn't share it with you. No, I didn't Sorry. see the card. 
You just and told me about the other cool hold stuff. Hold on, hold on. He sent us, he sent us his uh, Tabula Rasa album, and he signed that to us. So nice. that'll go up on our wall. So that's pretty cool. And he also sent us a thumb drive with all of his music on it that's and cool. uh, transcriptions of all his tunes. Wow. which is for sale on his website, too. So I want to thank Callum uh, for taking the time out to send this stuff our way. Uh, just so cool to have that little Guitar Geek goodie bag show up. And, uh, man, you rock. So keep doing what you're doing. And for those of you who haven't heard Callum Graham's music, y you have to. Uh, go to AcousticLife.tv. Uh, you can go through the artist there. He's been featured on an episode, and uh, he's just got some absolutely beautiful-sounding uh, compositions. So make sure to check out Callum Graham. And while you're checking out music... I pre-ordered this some months ago, and it came in, and I was just delighted. And it's it's Coulter Wall's newest album, Songs of the Plains, and it's and it's uh, now I said when I first got his his other album, his self-titled album, I said this is the best album I've heard in 2017. Mm. And I have to say that so far, Songs of the Plains is is quite possibly the best album I've heard in 2018. And I think of it, I mean, from the layout. This just, this just, it has that like '70s country vibe. Even the the, yeah. the tactile feel of the record sleeve, and uh, I think he's. I, I don't know. I don't think he can do any wrong. I, this the front to back, the album's amazing. It's it's absolutely amazing. I have no other words for it other than absolutely outstanding, magnificent, everything. <laughs> it's got all of those things. You're just staring into space, Noah. I'm no, I'm actually. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, but not looking at you. I'm looking. Oh, I I'm, see. I I'm, see. I'm looking at you on <laughs> on my monitor screen while you're looking actually at me. I was kind of looking for backup and so, on the Coulter Wall album. Well, I was waiting for you to tell the good folks at home to go listen to it. Oh well, absolutely. And funny thing, this should happen on today's episode. We're filming this obviously prior to uh, its its release date, but Noah and I are going to see Coulter Wall tonight here in Bozeman. Yes, we're super pumped. Yes. So that's what came in the mailbag. Noah, did anything come in for you? Uh, yeah, Callum sent me uh, <laughs> a nice card <laughs> and a thumb drive with all his music, which that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so uh, thanks for everybody sending stuff in the mailbag. It's always cool to hear from you. And, and, um, and just kind of the little cool stuff you guys send is always always appreciated. And we, we're very humbled when, when things arrive for us. So thank you very much. Um, I want to move right along, Noah. I'm not stopping you. I know, but I'm stopping myself because I just want to keep talking. <laughs> I, this is like I look forward to when we film Acoustic Tuesdays because it's just a it's a chance for me to just let my geek flag fly so 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 loud and proud. No, yeah. so I'm pretty excited. That was it's well said. Well, thanks, thanks, buddy. Oh, well, I want to share with you all who I'm listening to this week. And this week, uh, the artist recommendation comes from. Uh, David M. Now, David M. didn't submit this artist recommendation officially because you can submit artist recommendations on AcousticLife.tv. Just click that submit link in the top menu and you'll be able to type in an artist you want us to feature or somebody that you think we should know about. And uh, David didn't do that, but I've seen David a couple times in person at the Acoustic Life Festival. And he's always mentioned a, a, a fella by the name Toby Walker. And I thought, okay, I've got to finally buckle down and i got to listen to this guy because David keeps telling me about Toby Walker. And I am so glad he kept telling me about Toby Walker. Toby Walker is, um, he is an amazing blues player. I mean, slide, finger picking, you name it. It's not just, it's not just that he can execute the songs because he, I mean, he's got a catalog of songs, cover songs, original songs, you name it. He's got tons of stuff. It's not that he can just execute it with technical proficiency. He's got the feel, and I think I think that's something that just can't. I don't know if that can be taught. He just has it. You listen to him play, and it's like, man, every single note's just dripping with emotion. And it's just it, it sounds so good. So I want you to hear who I'm talking about. Okay, so we're gonna uh, have a listen to Toby Walker playing "Traveling Riverside Blues," and you'll notice that he's playing a national tricone with a slide. So you'll get a nice little flavor of the uh, the tricone resonator system. <laughs> Go down the 
perfect example of the feel. You know, Traveling Riverside Blues is a classic blues tune, but Toby's just got the feel and it sounds so good. His slide work is awesome. It's not overkill, it fits the song great, and he just pulls amazing tone out of the guitar. So Toby is Toby Walker is somebody that you absolutely need to know as a guitar geek. In fact, uh, he's got a whole list of albums uh, starting from 2001 all the way up to currently. Um, and I'll list a couple of my favorites, but I also uh, wanna mention his instructional materials. And I'll, I'll, I'll dig more into those here in a second, but let's, let's have a, a look at his album. So in 2001, he released Little Toby Walker and then followed that up in 2003 with two different albums, first of which uh, is Cool Hand, the second is called Back in the Groove. And then in 2008, he released Hand Picked and in 2013, uh, an album called What You See Is What You Get. Now, those are just highlights. If you're looking at uh, the Toby Walker's disc discography, you're thinking, gosh, where do I start? Those five albums would be great starting, uh, would be a great starting point for you. Uh, if you were to just pick one, I would go right off the bat, uh, Little Toby Walker, the very first one. Um, there's a lot of music there, so don't be, don't be uh, scared by all the options. Just dig right in, and uh, I think you'll really, really dig Toby Walker's stuff. And speaking of, of him being an amazing player and just, just having the tone and the feel, Toby's an awesome instructor as well. He's instructed at uh, Yorma Kalkinen's uh, Fur Peace Ranch. He's done a ton of instructional stuff for the Homespun Teaching Network. Um, uh, namely, it's called, I believe it's called Blues Finger Picking Freedom. Um, and that's something that you should check out. But that's just one of many instructional DVDs that he's done. He also offers lessons on his website. I think he does Skype lessons and some different uh, uh, song lessons there on his website. Uh, of course, to get to his website, his <laughs> to get to his website, just go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT63 and you'll be able to look at more samples of Toby's playing. You'll be able to uh, get links to his websites, buy his albums, the whole nine yards. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Or make sure to check him out. And I want to thank David M uh, for giving me the heads up about Toby. Um, it's definitely long overdue that he's been featured because really David has told me, I think every time you got to check out Toby Walker, you got to check out Toby Walker and the guy's just a monster. So I want you to check him out as well. All right, Noah. Uh, I want to turn it over to you right now, because I want, I want you to do small wins. Okay, I will gladly do so. <laughs> All right, small wins. Again, as always, from Acoustic Tuesday viewers, from past Acoustic Tuesday episodes. And so the first up we have today is from Don, who says... Glenn Jones's Giant CD and Crumb's Blues Heroes book both arrive this week. All right. Plus bonus for G for Vets. Awesome. And a small win for Noah. Yeah. Mm. Who really looks the part to officiate a wedding. <laughs> and congratulations to Tony and Whitney, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> watching intently from Boston, Massachusetts, as usual. Awesome. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's 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 nice of him to say. It is. Nice I thought you looked the part. You did pretty uh, good. You fooled me. <laughs> you fo <laughs> Thank you, Don. <laughs> Next one comes from Ron W. He says, "Just a note of thanks to you guys. Acoustic Tuesdays always managed to fire up my passion for guitar. All right. After many small failures in my guitar journey during the week, the inspiration of this show pushes me on. So oh. I could say that just watching this show is a small win. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching." And our last small win for today comes from Mickey U. Says, I purchased two tickets to the Lost Dog Street Band show in Atlanta on November the 29th. Nice. Taking my wife, who has agreed to go. She isn't a fan of acoustic music as I am, but I'm slowly winning her over. <laughs> Very cool. And Funny story about Lost Dog Street Band. Yes. Can I, can I share a story? Who's awesome, by the way. So, did you go? No. Oh. I, I wish I would have gone. Oh, okay. Uh <laughs> So it's it's stellar you were able to see the Lost Dog Street Band. They're one of my they're one of my favorites. Obviously Benjamin Todd, we featured him on uh, Acoustic Tuesday here before. But uh, right before Whitney and I's wedding, the Lost Dog Street Band was here in town. Literally, like probably less than a mile up the street. There's a there's a venue called the Filling Station, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I we... brought it up at home. I said, Whit, I'm gonna I, I think we should get tickets. To go see the Lost Dog Street Band. I got a look that I I cannot even recreate. Because it was like, I think it was maybe two days before our wedding. Something like that. Like, things were crazy. There was planning happening. Yeah, I got but it was the Lost Dog Street Band. Yeah, I know. And I was trying to explain that. But 
So that look is something that I don't ever want to see again. <laughs> it was a terrifying look. And Whitney's a beautiful, beautiful person, but she she did this look, and I was like, oh, that's enough. I won't push this issue any further. Uh, so kudos to you for seeing Lost Dog Street Band. And kudos to you, Tony, for realizing not to bring it up anymore. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Noah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Well, next up on our tour day force of resonator guitars and all things blues, uh, I want to actually go the bluegrass route a little bit because uh, back in January of this year, I picked up a guitar I have lusted after for a really long time. And when I first got it, I was super excited. I showed it off on Acoustic Tuesday. And it, and it is this uh, uh, beard, bell beard resonator guitar. Uh, just a beautiful guitar and one that... Um, I feel extremely fortunate to own. Um, I saw it up at the shop. I called Denny over uh, at the Beard Guitar Shop, and I was like, Denny, I think this is the one. But let's do this. Um, so uh, they sent it to me safely, and I have been playing it ever since, and I absolutely love this guitar. This is a Beard Bell Beard, and it is a Spider Bridge Resonator guitar, square neck, of course, played lap style in kind of the bluegrass circles. And... This thing is just gorgeous. All solid mahogany, uh, ebony fretboard. Uh, the inch, uh, the, the nut rather is about a half inch off the fretboard to play specifically in lap style playing. It's got cool uh, blacked out hardware, custom uh, Celtic knot cover plate. But inside, there's actually two resonator cones. There's your standard 12 inch cone that sits underneath the spider bridge. And then up front in this, this upper bout area of the guitar, there's actually a sympathetic resonator cone, a small 10 inch cone that gives it a little bit of extra zing and sparkle. And uh, I certainly noticed it, especially on the high strings, it just, it, it really sings and has this extended sustain. I absolutely love this guitar. And um, I have, of course, uh, some playing samples from the review that uh, I just released. So let's have a listen to the Beard, Bell Beard. <laughs> So beard guitars are made in Hagerstown, Maryland. Now, I I'm hope I said that right, because I've said Hagerstown before on Acoustic Tuesday, and I want to say somebody in the comments had corrected me, because mm. I think I said Hagerstown, but yeah. I think it's actually Hagerstown, according I to the correction. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it confidently. Uh, Hagerstown, Maryland is where the uh, beard guitar shop is located. Uh, Paul Beard leads a team of small, uh, a small team of luthiers, not a, a team of small luthiers. That'd be funny if they were all like, you know, <laughs> small, tiny luthiers. <laughs> Paul leads a, a team, a small team of luthiers, and they make some top-notch stuff. I mean, they make stuff for Jerry Douglas, uh, Josh Swift. My, uh, they made stuff for Mike Aldridge when he was around. Uh, Mike Witcher plays some of their stuffs, and, and they, they just have... Um, they make beautiful instruments, so I want to encourage you to check them out. They make everything from biscuit cone resonators uh, to the spider cone resonators, square neck and round neck, so it's not just square neck guitars, and I would strongly recommend checking them out. Just go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT63. You'll be able to do the full deep dive on beard guitars, and uh, I think you'll get lost in some of their the really cool models that they have coming out. Some of their decophonic models uh, are really incredible at a killer price point, so make sure to check those out. And uh, yeah, beard guitars. You can't... Uh, can't live with them, you can't live without them. That's what I like to say. <laughs> That's not what I like to say. It just seemed seemed right. We were talking about marriage. Forget it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing on the inside. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I d didn't didn't hit you. It didn't land like I I wanted it to. That's okay. Um, so we want to know what you think about the show so far. So please, in the comments below, this is one of the first fully themed episodes we've ever done. Uh, the whole theme of today's episode is resonator guitars and blues. And if you dig this kind of stuff, uh, please suggest other themes in the comments and uh, just let us know where you're tuning in from. We love to feature comments and do shout outs. And uh, while you're uh, featuring, while you're, wow, I'm struggling today, Noah. It's you because you didn't make any coffee. You know what? Just take a breath. You didn't make me any coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> While you're leaving comments, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, uh, please do please do so. Hit the red subscribe button and don't forget to don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new episode that comes out. Uh, so make to make sure you never miss one. And if you never really want to miss an episode, get Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email. It's super easy. There's a link in the description. Just go ahead and sign up, and you'll get Acoustic Tuesday delivered effortlessly right to your email every Tuesday morning, so you never miss an episode. Now, speaking of comments, Noah, I'm going to force you to say some words because I can't. Okay. Uh, can I make the first comment today? Mm-hmm. You, you can't win them all, right? Is that a, is that a statement? Is that to, to make me feel better? Well, you said, you, you said, you know, you can't live with them, can't live without them, so yeah. I thought I would throw one in. Oh, that, oh, you know, oh, you're doing sage advice, like sage quotes. Sage advice, okay. exactly. Maybe that's a new segment, <laughs> Sage Quotes with Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the I first. I like it. I like it. I'll get to work on that. Yeah. Okay, so shout outs uh, this week. So first one goes to Diorman, uh, if I said that correctly. Uh, Diorman R., who's still watching from Fairfax, Virginia. All right. And then we have Han J. Yoon, who says, awesome, watching from Korea. Then we have Mike, Very cool. Mike A., watching from Almaty, Kazakhstan. Whoa. And Claudia M says, uh, for the shout out, woke up in an awful mood, and then Acoustic Tuesday fixed it. All right. Fixing moods. Joe, (laughs) fixing moods. Since 2016, (laughs) (laughs) or whenever we started. (laughs) Joe S says, uh, viewing from Hamilton, Ontario. Very cool. Uh, JB's says, new here, beginner guitarist, and thank you, learned something new. All right. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Stephen S. says, I needed an Acoustic Tuesday today as the dreaded October cold has me unable to sing for a while. Won't stop my guitar geeking, though. We persevere. That's solid. Yes. Sorry, no, I That's okay. That's okay. (laughs) And uh, last comment comes from Robert C. who says, watching from D.C. and taking a cue from our congressional friends and thus avoiding responsibility for anything... I have time to catch this episode of Acoustic Tuesday, uh, he's speaking of AT60, on Tuesday for a change, and he throws in a small win, and he all says, right. in all seriousness, sorta, uh, looking forward to seeing I'm with her next month in Philly with some mutual friends in that area. Oh, and the bar chord thing was very cool. Awesome. I still find it difficult to transition from, say, an open chord to a bar, but at least when I do play a bar, it rings much better uh, than this time a year ago. Nice. And yes, friends, if you're on the fence about fretboard wizard, don't fret. <laughs> <laughs> or do fret. Dang it. You know what I mean. We are all full of uh, sage quotes and puns today. Yeah, it, it's, it, it really feels like I don't know what I'm doing right now. I, I feel the same way. I'm like having a, I think I might be having a mental breakdown on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. No, I'm not really having a mental breakdown. I just feel like I'm moving through molasses. Uh, I don't know if it's the weather it, or it's, what. Yeah, it's never just one thing. Oh, it's always man. it's always things. Uh, I'll tell you what. It's plural. But you know, it's okay because I'm still having fun. Well, I am too. I just wish I could speak. <laughs> and so do, so do the folks at home. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Is that... Do you have any more comments? Sorry, I don't, I just kind of started carrying on. Nope, that was it, Tony. You're well, good. thank you. Uh, thank you to all of those of you who left comments. Uh, it's always a treat to hear from you all and, and do shout-outs and whatnot. Um, it certainly helps us uh, uh, break things up when we have some good comments. Gives us a break. <laughs> Gives me a break, anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do want to feature some guitar arsenals from Acoustic Tuesday viewers. This is a fun thing that we love to do because... These are our viewers. This is our Guitar Geek family showing off their guitar collections. And uh, the first one up today is really... Uh, Noah put this on the screen as we were rehearsing. And he's like, whoa, that's a lot of guitars. <laughs> so this one comes from Bob C. with his dog uh, from Sedona, Arizona. Kudos to getting the, uh, for getting the, the dog to sit in front. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's high points. That's high Guitar Geek points right there. So here we go. This is what's in Bob's guitar snow. The front row from left to right, we've got a 2004 Martin D16, a, two ta- a 2010 Martin Triple O 15S, a Guild GAD30R, a Siegel Coastline 12 string, an Ibanez AG95, and a 90s Fender Jazz Bass. In the middle row, left to right, an old La Patrie Classical. I used to have one of those, killer guitars. A 2006 Taylor Fall 
limited edition 410 with beautiful walnut back and sides. A 1984 Larivee D60 with Brazilian rosewood back and sides. That's his personal favorite. A 2000 Larivee CO3. That's his group gigging favorite. And a Gibson HP 415, made in Bozeman, walnut back and sides with a maple neck. And the back row, left to right, a 1985 Taylor 310, an old Sigma mandolin, a, Cord a Cordoba Gitalele, two Kala tenor ukuleles, a Stumac kit tenor ukulele, assembled and embellished by me, purfling rosette bindings, pearl inlay headstock logo. Violin uh, in the back there was handmade by his then 80-year-old grandfather, a blacksmith who retired at age 75 and made over 60 violins before he passed at the age of 95. Pretty cool story there, and I want to thank Bob for sharing your guitar arsenal with all of us. Next up, we've got Clay S. from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now you're thinking, Clay, what the heck, man? Where's the guitars? But check this out. Clay was just pumped because he got his guitar arsenal shirt, and he's at a very cool event, and you need to know about it. So he said, hey, guys, I'll submit my guitar arsenal soon, but I just wanted to send out a photo of me with my shirt, proudly representing at the Wide Open Bluegrass Festival this past weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I want to thank Clay for taking time to snap a picture and send it out our way. If you want your guitar arsenal featured on Acoustic Tuesday, it's super easy. All you have to do is get yourself a guitar arsenal shirt. There's a link right beneath the YouTube video. Go ahead and put that guitar arsenal shirt on when you receive it in the mail and take a picture with you amongst all of your guitars in that guitar arsenal shirt. And then last but certainly not least, submit that picture at AcousticLife.tv. Just go there, click that submit link in the top menu, and you'll be able to add your picture, description, the full-blown deal, and we'll feature it on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. <sighs> I got that out okay. Great job. That was good, huh? Uh, yeah. I'm really on a roll. I was like kind of holding back wanting to laugh during the you're listing all the guitars in the guitar arsenal because I, yeah. I was just waiting. Oh, it was a there was something. a rough start, but once the momentum built, it was just like hanging on. I was like, oh, keep going. You're really pronouncing things great, you <laughs> or well, whatever the right word is. All right. <laughs> um, so if I haven't asked already, I want you, I want to ask again. If I did ask already, if I haven't, I want to ask for the first time. I want you to please please share this show with your guitar geek friends. Uh, the whole goal of Acoustic Tuesday is to unite guitar geeks every single Tuesday, learn some things, find out about new gear and just get inspired to live your very best acoustic life and we want as many guitar geeks here on tuesday as possible so please share this show with your friends send them to acousticlife.tv pick your favorite uh, feature your favorite review your favorite episode and send a link to them and uh, let's try and get as many guitar geeks as possible united on tuesdays here on acoustic tuesday because noah you know you're a guitar geek when you watch acoustic tuesday every tuesday at 10 a.m mountain time on youtube that is true and you know what <laughs> Speaking of, you know, your guitar geek. When I have some for you today, Tony. Oh, I, I wasn't even thinking that. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, it's just you picked up on that. I that know. was great. It's awesome. <laughs> this man, we're just like wavelengths. Yeah, sinking. It's great. It's a real all-star team. Here now, today. before I share the, you know, your guitar geek wins, I mm -hmm. feel, I'm, a, I feel a little self-conscious, and I feel like I should mention uh, that I acknowledge that I'm looking a little scruffy right now. <laughs> And especially after the comment about that I looked the part of the officiant. Yeah. And then that made me even more self-conscious because oh. I, I just should fill in the folks at home just a little bit uh, that, no, I'm not trying to grow a beard like you. I don't think I ever could. Maybe one day when I grow up, I'll be able to. But actually what I'm doing is, is I'm gearing up for mustache November. And I'll leave it at that. So as we start rolling into November, pretty soon I'll be back to my usual clean-shaven uh, youthful, effervescent-looking self, but with a mustache. And I'll give you more details on that when we get there. Okay? <laughs> Thank you for that full disclosure. You're welcome. The, I, 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 felt... was, I had the, like my radar, my facial hair radar, uh -huh. was just like this morning. It was like, doot, 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 and I walked in, and I was like, what the hell are you doing right now? What's yeah, happening? Exactly. See, yeah. I felt that. You so, look unkempt. Okay, well, thank you for letting me explain. <laughs> All right. So, you know your guitar geek when, uh, Kabayoth says, you know your guitar geek when you argue with fundamentalist, religious-like fervor about the number of tunings needed for a set. <laughs> That's intense. And, and uh, Kabayoth was on a roll because they threw another one out there and said, you know your guitar geek when you started playing guitar to pick up chicks and you wind up in a room full of middle-aged men talking about your nails. 
that's a that's good really one. good. That's yeah. real good. <laughs> uh, and our last one today comes from Josh F, who says, "You know your guitar geek when it's deer season, and you are sitting in the stand, watching Acoustic Tuesday on mute, and trying to guess what you all are saying <laughs> while hunting." That it, is incredible. I, I can picture it, right? You're in the tree. You're in the camos. You're in your hunter's orange. Yeah. At least you should be. Yeah. Um, and and you're on your device. Yeah. <laughs> and you're watching Acoustic Tuesday. <laughs> I just, I, so I used to, uh, this is maybe a story for another time, um, but I'm going to go for it anyway, because mm. why not? Why not? Um well, the funny thing is, is I so I grew up. My dad hunts. He still hunts. I I went hunting with him, and I was just thinking, man, I used to be so cold and miserable sitting in the stand with him, just freezing, like nothing, like, and it was all about the great outdoors. You know, it was about being there and smelling the air and yeah. hearing the deer crunching through the leaves. Oh yeah, you I know, can, I can hear freezing. It. I hear it now. Yeah, <laughs> and now it's just like. You can just pull up Acoustic Tuesday and watch that while you wait for the deer. <laughs> or miss the deer entirely. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole herd so goes by. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, speaking of deer, I want to talk about a mule. Ooh. Ooh, pretty good, huh? That that one was not planned. A fellow ungulate, right? That was good. <laughs> I'm impressed. I am too. I'm really picking up speed <laughs> as we get going here. Um <laughs> I do want to talk about a mule. I want to talk about a mule resophonic guitar because as the theme of the day is resonator guitars and blues, you now know everything there is to know about resonators. You've been introduced to Toby Walker. You've heard him play a tricone. You've seen the the beard, bell beard guitar, and you've seen some amazing guitars from our Acoustic Tuesday viewers. Now it's time to focus on mule resophonic guitars because I want to feature this guitar. This here is a mule tricone. And you're thinking, Tony, whoa, 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 hold the phone here. This is not a tricone. Silly, this is a single biscuit cone. No, no, no. Actually, if you look inside, it's a tricone. No joke. It is a tricone. This is modeled after a 1927 National um, that was actually a prototype. And it was a tricone resonating system inside a single cone body. Now, I first encountered this guitar when Charlie Parr came through Bozeman, uh, I want to say two years ago now, maybe maybe a little bit longer. Uh, it was winter. He was playing at the filling station, which is about a mile away from our office. And um, I, I just ran into him right before the show. I wanted to catch up with him real quick. I said, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, dude, you got to check out this guitar. So he hands me his his Mule Resonator guitar, and I'm playing it. And I'm like, what is what the hell is happening with this guitar? It sounds incredible. And he's like, look inside. And it was a tricone resonating system inside a single cone body. And I was just floored. And he was we, we got to talking about it. But anyways, uh, it was then that I first encountered this whole notion and uh, this particular Mule Resophonic guitar. And then Matt, some time later, said, hey, I got a tricone here. Would you, want, would you want to do a review on it? I said, absolutely. Of course I want to do a review on it. The guitar came in. I played it. And I was just smitten. So I was like, Matt, I really don't want to send this guitar back to you. Can I please buy it from you? So I did. And I'm, I've been happy with it ever since I got it. Uh, and prior to purchasing it, I actually did the review. And uh, I've got a little bit of a sample of that here for you to take a look at. So let's have a look at the Mule Tricone uh, Resonator Review. Today I have the absolute pleasure to review a Mule Resonator guitar. Mule guitars are made by Matt Ike and his crew in Saginaw, Michigan. And as I mentioned, this guitar doesn't look like it should because this guitar is actually a Tricone Resonator guitar. But you'd never guess that from the front of it because it looks like, well, it looks like a single cone. And I've reviewed a single cone before. Great bark, great bite, but this tricone is a whole different beast. This is a steel-bodied mule tricone resonator. Underneath this single biscuit style cover plate is your traditional tricone layout. Essentially, it's like three small resonator cones that this bridge sits on, and it really just emanates sustain. It has a wonderful punchy tone, and it rings much longer than a standard single biscuit cone resonator does. So Mule 
Resophonic guitars are made in Saginaw, Michigan, led by, uh, rather, by Matt Ike and his crew of luthiers. And Matt used to work actually for Huss and Dalton, and he'd carve necks and whatnot for them, and then moved up to Michigan. A bunch of stuff happened in between, but I'm giving you the condensed version. And uh, is now creating Mule Resophonic guitars, and they really make some incredible stuff. I mean, from the tricone to the single cone, uh, they put pickups, or they can put pickups in pretty much any of the guitars. They're also doing Mule casters, which is like a, um, well, it's like a steel-bodied Telecaster. Beautiful thing. I mean, they're just they're they're pieces of art. They're beautiful. Um, in fact, he he made a. Uh, a pink mule caster, I think, I, th I want to say it was pink, for, for Jason Momoa. You know, the uh, Khal Drogo of, of Game of Thrones, or uh, was it Aquaman? Is that the thing he's in? Oh, maybe. I he, have not seen one single episode of he, Game of Thrones. He's the dude that's like, he, he, if you look at him the wrong way, he'll like he'll just break your neck. Like, or that's does, he, how he or does he just look like he'll do that? Oh, no. I mean, I think he's a really nice guy. In fact, he killed Matt. <laughs> he well, let me explain. <laughs> no, that that's really awkward, isn't it? So Matt went over to hand deliver the guitar to Jason, and Jason was working on some show. I, I want to say it was like a Civil War show or something like that. Mm. Um, but anyways, uh, Matt's like Matt loves stories, and he's like, I would love a story, you know, after delivering this guitar. And Jason's like, Here, put this on. And he was in a scene, and and he actually killed him. Cool. Uh, on screen. Matt's yeah, still alive. You, I got you, oh, I got I'm really confusing the story. This is bad. <laughs> Matt's way better at telling the story than I am. Anyways, uh, so those are Mule Resophonic guitars. You should definitely check them out. I think they're um, they're masterfully made, and they sound so, so good. Charlie Parr plays them. Uh, Jeffrey Foucault plays them. I mean, there's a bunch of different artists that play them. Kelly Joe Phelps has one. Um, so make sure to check out Mule Resophonic Guitars. You can find out more uh, about Mule Resophonic Guitars at AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT63. And uh, thus completes our tour of, of all things blues and resonator guitar. Noah? That was fun. That was a fun tour. I liked I, I liked being on one topic the entire time. You know what? I that's what it that's what it is. We were talking about what makes us feel like we're just so loose and like what is Yeah. Maybe it's the new theme thing. I think so. I, I really like, like it. Let's do more. Well, we do have to do more in this episode cuz we're not done. Oh. I got to give the answer to the Guitar Geek trivia. Right. So, here is your Guitar Geek trivia question just for a quick review. Resonator guitars can be commonly referred to as Dobros, but Dobro is actually a brand name. The brand name Dobro actually has a hidden meaning. What does Dobro stand for? Does it stand for A, double resonator, B, double the sound, C, dutiful owners of beautiful resonating objects, or D, Dope Yera Brothers? Well, if you answered C, dutiful owners of beautiful resonating objects, you're not correct, although I thought it was pretty witty, so I just wanted to give a little call a highlight to that. The answer is actually D, Dopiera Brothers. In 1929, John Dopiera resigned from the National Corporation and went on to form his own business, the Dobro Corporation. Interestingly enough, the name Dobro comes from the words Dopiera and Brothers, the D-O from Dopiera and the B-R-O from Brothers. He was forced to develop a new style of resonator because his patents still belonged to the National Corporation. Because of this, John developed a new style of bridge we now call the Spider Bridge, which you now know what it is. Uh, by 1932, the National Corporation was having financial difficulties, and John's brother, Louis Dopiera, purchased National, and the two companies merged under the name National Dobro Corporation. Some pretty cool resonator guitar history there. In fact, there's a whole bunch of lore around resonator guitar history that we'll touch on in a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And speaking of future episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, let's take a sneak peek into next week. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, a smorgasbord of acoustic goodness, including a history book that will resonate with you, a quick guide to a new tuning, and a way to help wave your Guitar Geeks Unite flag. So I cannot wait to dig into more Guitar Geekiness with you next week. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please go to AcousticLife.tv, where you can do all sorts of deep diving on any artists I've ever reviewed, any product, you name it. And if you so happen to want to purchase any product that I've ever mentioned on Acoustic Tuesday, you can do so through AcousticLife.tv. 
there are referral links on there. Those are Amazon referral links and we get a percentage of that sale and we pass that percentage, 100% of that percentage directly on to Guitars for Vets as a donation on behalf of all guitar geeks. So pretty awesome stuff happening at AcousticLife.tv. Make sure to check that out and make sure to never miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining Noah and myself this week. We wish you the best week and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Cheers. Thank you.